So today is about converting this, which is Tom's linear loaded dipole, which we made. I'm going to add 40 meters to it. I might do a little bit of other work to it as well. I mean, it's very low down. I mean, it's just above my head here. Look, and at the moment comes to this tree here. We just need to recite it as well. It's a little bit too low. I just want it out of the way. And also 80 and 40 meters, in my opinion, certainly 80 needs probably about 15 feet, three or four meters better. This is just a bit too low. I'll pick a slot somewhere up on these branches, you get the ladder out and get a halyard over it, just so we've got the middle going up. Then we need two trees each side for the legs. But I think the first thing we need to do is just drop this down and start grafting on 40. It wasn't designed as a fan dipole, so there might little be a bit of engineering involved. So in case you missed it last time, we, we built Tom's dipole, we call it Tom's dipole, he never used it in the end. It was an option, we were going to give it to him as a linear loaded dipole. So this linear loaded dipole, we've got the feed point here, it's pretty low to the ground. It goes 12 and a half metres that way, which in American is uh, about 40 feet and then it comes back and it was going to come back 12 and a half meters but we cut a bit off to get the tune and it ended up tuning at i seem to remember 3.75 or thereabouts and it was fine and that's quite low to the ground all right so what i've got to do now is add on 40 meters which is going to be 10 meter legs and what i've noticed is i need a bit of separation between there and there if it's too close together i don't get a very good match so it's only going to be two and a half meters shorter than this so it's a really super compact 1840 and if we had the time and inclination you know you could add 30 to this or 20 or whatever and that would do as well but i've got to faff around with this feed point to graft on 40 meters so under tension it doesn't it, <coughs> it doesn't break and the, and the other thing is that i'm using I'm only using you know, stranded copper wire, it's called DX10, which isn't really designed for high tension work. So we'll prototype all this, we'll get it all working. If we like it, what I'll do is I'll remake the whole thing with that um, Kevlar, uh, olive green military stuff, with a Kevlar core and the lovely um, copper braided jacket on the outside. Let's get this up anyway and have a go. And we've got a few other things to do. Like we've got to make the... Um, Got to make a patch cable, a coax cable from the cabinet in the field out to here. So I think what we should start doing is I'll run off a pair of 10 meter legs. All right, so 30 something feet, which is going to be too long, by the way. And then we'll just cut it to suit. All right, there's 10. You cut that. I just got to say that uh, for all amateur radio operators anywhere in the world, some of them are having a really bad day, aren't they? Or week, or month, or a few years. Could be all of us, who knows? So, uh, warm feelings of love to everybody, if you don't mind me saying. That's all I'll say about it. Right, it's pointless measuring another one out again, then I will just use this as the tape measure. By the way, if you've never... I know this is my wire DX10. I'm just so proud of it. It just doesn't tangle. I mean, you can make it tangle, yeah, but you can't... It's not by nature. There we are. Very tangleable. Snip. All right, two tens. This wire, I haven't said it, I haven't said it very often. I mean, this, there's a real weird story about this wire, is that when we, I, I used to use, right, I used to use this absolutely disgusting stuff. It was called Don 10, Don 10, D 10. It was twisted together wires and the uh, British military used to use it for telephones, you know, across the desert and everything. And it came in, 800 meter drums i think it's half a mile or something and uh and i bought up the surplus market i mean wendy wendy told me i bought something like 100 miles of this stuff and to me that was just fine for dx commander but i realized that we just i just there was none left i 
I'm the person you can blame for using up all the D10 in the world. Sorry about that. Weren't selling it to the, the original customers. So when it was running out, there's only two companies in Great Britain who not only who do both strand the, the copper and put the jacket on it, all right? Now I do business with both of these, this is how it happens now, but I didn't know at the time, so I had to do all my research. And I asked them to send me lots of samples down. I told them roughly the spec. And I said, and I want it nice and pliable. And the only thing one of them had, uh, an English company, is they had a really nice wire, and but it was twisted together. There was a brown and a black. So I untwisted it all and we did some tests and I ran, I don't know, 15, 16 hundred watts up this thing for about a minute on 20 meter band and it held. I was worried about the jacket, you see, but this jacket is good for minus 40 centigrade. I don't know what that is in Fahrenheit, some ridiculous, very gold in other words. It was actually designed originally for the British military for, for the army to do de uh, detonation uh, you know, the, the pair of wires to the explosives at the bridge, you know, and then there's a man at the other end who would go boom. That's what it was originally designed for, which is why it had to behave appropriately at minus 40 degrees centigrade. They didn't want it snapping and kinking and everything when they're trying to blow up a bridge. So that's the history of DX10. So they wrote it, I call it DX10, it's single core. Oh, just an interesting story, I thought. Oh, I don't need to mark them, do I? I was going to mark these with white. No, I will do anyway, just in case I get confused because it doesn't take a lot, to be honest. We'll just put a bit of white flash so if it's on the ground, we can tell. But that is definitely 40. I'm not going to get confused. I don't know why I'm doing this. I don't know why I'm bloody telling you, to be honest. Okay, so I was going to wear my fancy tool holder today but I don't need to because all we're taking outside is pliers, it's side cutters, a knife and some wire strippers and some tape. Oh and some wire. <laughs> some ladders. I'm starting to feel a little bit tired. I've got the step ladders with me and it's not even 12 o'clock. <laughs> Tom put the other end of this down here by the holly bush. Look, maybe that's where the word. Maybe that's why we call it Holly Farm. Right, what sort of knot did you tie, Tom? Let's have a look. Ah, oh, good enough. Now I think I think he needs a bit of knot work, does young Tom? We'll we'll give him some knot lessons. Next time he's down. Undo. This is the real stuff. This is genuine 550 paracord. Let me undo this. Oh, that should just drag back now. I've lost it. Must be on the floor. Oh, here it is. Oh, we should just be able to... Oh, there's the end. That's, that's how we connected it. So it's easy to undo, look. Clever. So it's down. Now it's just a case of relocating it. Well, actually, before we do that, we need to um, graft on 40 metres. And it looks a bit... Well, look at this. So to graft on 40, I mean, there's only one place we could do it. Was we can graft it onto here, do a bit of strain relief here. And, uh, I mean, it's only temporary. As long as it lasts for a couple of months into the summer, and then we can replace this, look, with proper stuff. All right, let's get to it.
so I don't have a cameraman with me today. Lockie's off. But I'll show you what I've done so far anyway. So here's 40 there, this one I'm moving. Got a little tail and somehow with just where my thumb is, I've got to strip this wire here, tiny bit, because that's the 80 meter at the moment. Just strip it and graft it on. Just get it to hold, even if it's for two or three weeks. Okay, well you could see my little join there. So there's 40 and 80 connected. That's 40 and 80 there connected. I put a bit of tape on it. It would pull apart, but that's not where the strain is, you see. The strain's not there, it's just got waggle. It just holds for a couple of weeks, that's all I want. I'll tell you what I'm thinking. I'm thinking I've done this wrong. To get more separation on these elements, because the separation at the moment is right on that corner. Wouldn't it have been cool to bring 40 metres to like down here and then graft it on. I'm not taking it apart now, I'll be fine. Fifteen, sixteen feet. It's it's only up there. I've got a thread one side of this through it, haven't you? Alright. So I've thrown the element over. I just need to pull the whole thing over now, don't I? I've put wires up before in a forest. It's always a blooming nightmare. Things get tangled up and everything. We're getting there though. That's not a bad height. We've got to find a route for the other side. I've kind of almost got the route for this side. in the way isn't it we'll snap it off there we are it's not in the way anymore so I think I've got a route kind of down over there 40 meters has come detached from 80 these are going to get twisted to hell that's it there well we'll just because they're too close together I think what we should do is remove 40 and recite it in a different direction. There we are. But 80 is fine. 80 is basically going to go over there somewhere. Okay, so we've got 40 and 80 going in different directions. I couldn't film it because they said the camera gimbal was overheating or some dark thing. But uh, we're going to. The tree's just up here, look. Leg one, if you like, or one side of the wigglies. 40 meters going straight down here. And then this is 80, it's locked up again. And then this is 80 here. And we're gonna, if we're still recording, and we're gonna basically go down there, it's nice. We're basically going down there, it's nice and easy. All right. I need to, I need to go into the office and get some power cord, that's all. I'll come back in because, um, well, well I, I need to like do things like drink, eat. But also this little camera, Seem to be uh, annoying me. I've let it sit, charged it up. So I'll get back out now and get some paracord and lift up 40 metres. So time for a drawing, I think. This blooming camera's playing up. It keeps freezing and saying gimbal lockup and stuff. It sounds like an Apollo spacecraft. Uh, look, okay, I'll just uh, have a look at this piece of paper, look. So look, the tree is here. 
currently I've got 40 meters well 40 meters is going to end up coming along here through the tree and coming off it that way 80 meters is currently going this way and that way so that's 40 and that's 80 so I've got some nice separation so we should get easy bandwidth and SWR curves but the real test now is I'm going to put some paracord at the end of these tie them to trees apply the coax and let's see we'll just fire it into the radio it's not going to be far off but a oh, funny feeling 40 meters is going to be probably a bit long because I don't think it needs to be we what did we start off with 10 meters I think it needs to, it's going to be miles out actually so we'll need to we'll need to chop it back so let's go outside tie it to a tree Apply the coax, see how we get on. I've decided to try and get smart for once in my life. 300 divided by 7.15 divided by 4 times 0 0.92 9.65 it says. Well, I'm quite good at it's just over a foot uh, 9.65 and that's that's 10 so that's that is 35 centimeters <laughs> yeah, 35 because 100 minus 65 35 okay so 30 just over a foot so do I cut it now just over a foot all right both both the, both the, I think we'll do that let's I'll just I'll just guesstimate it we'll take about a foot off about 30 centimeters and then there'll be less of a less of a guess because I'm bound to have to redo it again. Oh, shut up, Callum. I'll, I'll keep this bit to measure the other, the other side. They don't have to be equal, you know. That doesn't matter really that much. So I'm just doing a tie, a little stopper knot here, look. Once over twice over, it's a regular knot but it goes around twice, look, pull it, it goes all attractive, at the end coming out, that'll do, where's it gone? We can still get it off you see, that's the nice thing about these, still get it off but it shouldn't come off like in the breeze and stuff. So there's 40, I'll show you. Obviously it comes to this tree here and if we turn around, it goes through those trees somewhere there. 40 already comes over this little branch here and I temporarily tied it off. Go away. I just, I just tied it off here so We'll come back a bit and probably use this tree. Let me put the camera down so you can see what I'm doing. Oh, I forgot how much we cut off the other one. It doesn't really matter. Found it. At least we know they're both the same. It honestly doesn't really matter, not an HF. It's quite interesting, you know, because like in my back garden, or backyard as they say in America, 40 meters is really big, how am I gonna get that in? In here it's tiny. Where are we? So it's it's currently here going all the way to the to the tree. It's a nice little route actually. I've just got to just tying it off here now. So we'll put a little butterfly not that branch here is pretty good so we'll put a little butterfly there and bearing in mind this saw that's going to be changed by at least a couple of inches or 50 centimeters in a minute where can i put you now 
you're on a branch at the moment. I'm not over tightening this. Don't over tighten your elements. You'll never get rid of the sag anyway. There's a mathematical formula about sag actually. So we will come to just under the camera, I think. Whoops, you fell over. Ah, what a different branch really. I think we'll come down to here if we can. It might slip. On the other hand, it might not slip. Not if we go, where are we gonna go? There's a little growth here. A little growth, I know a few people with a little growth. And then I'm just gonna go, I'm just gonna go through this, it's not. Let me put you down, I'm sorry about this. Something's all funny, funny with the camera. Do you know, I don't know if you heard that boom then. I keep hearing that boom, I keep looking on the horizon, expecting to see a mushroom crowd. Ridiculous, isn't it? 2022. Okay, we'll fire up the radio. Oh, got to put the coax in. <laughs> Whoops. So we're gonna borrow the coax from the 12.4. Because when I get, the trouble is, I keep, you know, I get to Wednesday or Thursday and I think, oh, I've got to put this back up so I can get back on the net. So to have this 1480 means at least, you know, when I'm doing my development, I can just sort of loaf along 40 and 80. Yeah, so that's already connected to the cabinet. I've got to climb back up the ladders now, look. Where's the blooming camera? <laughs> There's that much tree and stuff around here. I need to get an handle to chop a bit off. I mean, I can't. I have got agreement to put wires up in this bit of the forest, but it is in American money. It's a, this, this, my little antenna field is like $3,000 a year. But when we were negotiating, I said, I want to use the tree line for wires, just for my hobby, really, not for the business, just so I can play. Anyway, we're connected. Let's go in, switch the radio on, see what it tunes like. By the way, that coax comes out this box, you see, and, and the cables go underground uh, all the way to the office somewhere over there. It's 41 metres to here, three fours, 12, about 130 feet. And obviously they go up to the tree here. But the next job, literally after this, and just getting the 12.4 launched, is a remote coax transmit switch in so we can do you know i can go you know click dipole vertical whatever i've really got that ability for the receive loops so we've got two receive loops they're using two separate coaxes and there's an aeroplane going overhead so i'll shut up now uh, it's, it's too short <laughs> by about the amount i cut off <laughs> So this is now a couple of days since I've been recording. I've got a bit of continuity, right? You wouldn't know, would you? Um, I actually changed my uh, sweater, cardigan, whatever you want to call it, in which part of the world will depend in your vocabulary. Linear loading. This 80 metre tuning has actually taken me a lot longer than I thought. And so we're going to do a whole video on linear loading because linear loading is basically, and I've explained this on uh, Tom's video that we did oh i don't know a couple of weeks ago but you've got a feed point in the middle and you go out and you come back close together and that loads it up and our we calculate it's about seven instead of tw instead of each leg being 25 percent each leg becomes about 17 percent. so you save quite a lot of room however if you're trying to tune it with the wire very near the feed point 
just like if you put a coil near the feed point or you put a coil halfway down an element you need a hell of a lot more turns on your coil halfway down an element than you do uh, right at the feed point so we've got a it's non-linear loading in a weird way so although we're loading it in a linear fashion each piece of wire coming back is acting on a on the on the main element slightly differently if i'm confusing you don't worry because we're going to cover that in a video but in the meantime on both day one and day two we spoke to tom this is his website here it's called walkingandtalking.uk he's one man in the wilderness and lucky for me i just literally happened to be cruising around and there he was so um we had a contact on day one we had a contact day two this renders perfectly on a smartphone as well so i'll put that link in in the description you can see all his radio gear he's walking around the isle of Arran, which is about 100 kilometers 60 70 miles and he explains his concept what he's doing and that sort of thing so radio gear in depth there we are so this is one man about 20 22 kilos on his back which is i don't know how many pounds 30 pounds or something and uh doing a 60 mile walk around this part of the world fantastic isn't it so luckily for me i was speaking to him day one day two i'm recording this on day three but we'll do a whole thing on this when he comes back we'll interview him and find out what it was like what the problems were if you ever fancy doing a huge expedition with a battery and solar power and a dx commander expedition let me know because i can supply that either at cost or as a giveaway who knows all right all the best see you next time bye for now uh, M0 RMY, this is M0 XXT listening. Mike, Mike Zero, Romeo, Mike Yankee. M0 RMY, uh, you, you, lots of QRM, but I can hear you. I've got the very low to the ground uh, dipole running 400 watts, so hopefully you can hear me okay, Tom, over. Um, today I've gone a bit further than I thought. I've done about 10, 11 miles. I, I carried on a bit further to find a camp spot. Um, it, it's not, uh, you know, it's not the Ritz, this place, but it, it'll do. Um, so it's very pleasant, and my schedule, Callum, I'm going to try, if I can, to do the walking in the morning. It's bloody heavy, this pack. It's bloody hard work. I'm not going to lie to you, Callum. Excuse my French. So I'll get the hard work done in the morning, and then I can kind of chill and relax in the afternoon on the radio. I will do one morning where I don't go so early, because I want to try and get Australia um, at about 7.30 in the morning, Callum, over. Yeah, yeah, good one. OK, fine. What, on like uh, 20 or something like that, Tom? Roger. On 20, yes, 20 uh, on Saturday in my car, I, it was 5 and 9 into VK. So uh, I think with 10 watts it may be a bit more difficult, but uh, I was only 80 in the car, so by the sea, you know what I mean?